Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about expansionary monetary policy in the long run. In this video we're going to look at the relationship between the money market and aggregate demand aggregate supply in the long run looking at the example of expansionary monetary policy. So in this case here expansionary monetary policy uh, influences the economy in a number of ways. So for expansionary monetary policy, the central bank will increase the money supply in the economy. This will tr be through the open market purchase or repo of government bonds. So this may be on a short term basis, such as seven days. Now, when the money supply increases in the economy, that causes the money supply curve over here on the right hand side in our money market to shift to the right. So we have money supply one over here, which is a shift to the right of the money supply. And what this indicates is a movement from A, an equilibrium interest rate of five, down to B, an equilibrium interest rate, let's say, of 3%. And at the same time, the quantity of money in the economy has increased. So what happens over on the right hand side in the real economy? Well, what happens over here is at the exact same price level, we have an expansion of aggregate demand. So why is this the case? Why would the AD curve shift over to the right like this here? So AD1, rightward shift. Well, the reasoning for this is as follows. As the money supply increases in the economy, that means that the interest rate drops and interest sensitive expenditure elements such as consumption and investment tend to increase as the cost of borrowing goes down. In this case, as they increase, they're a part of aggregate demand and spent expenditure. So aggregate demand increases or shifts to the right with a constant price level here. So we have a rightward shift at the exact same price level. Now, at this situation, the economy has opened up an output gap and an inflationary gap in this case, where the quantity of goods and services demanded by customers, aggregate demand, is greater than short run supply. And in this case here, we will see that inventories will start to decrease for businesses. This will be a signal for them to start to increase the price level because they will know there's excess demand in the economy and that price increase will start to reduce spending in the economy. So we'll reach a point here at point B and at point C. So that's a short run equilibrium. However, in this case here, because the price level has increased, and let's say it has increased to four over here, at point C, there is still a gap in the economy. The output level is still higher than its long run aggregate supply. So if that's the case, over here between uh, C here and the potential or long run output, we still have our inflationary gap in the short run. Now, this means that prices are increasing, inflationary gap, and that puts upward pressure on the wage level in the economy. So if prices increase and this pushes up the wage level in the economy, this can have a negative impact on short run supply. And if it has a negative impact on short run supply, what we see is the short run supply curve will tend to shift backwards to the left. So in our situation here, in the long run, short run supply is negatively impacted because wages are increasing and the short run aggregate supply curve shifts backwards left here as indicated. So we have short run supply aggregate supply one and in the long run we tend towards a new equilibrium point point d where the price level has risen even further up to price level of six and the output level has returned to its long run potential output of a hundred so in the long run expansionary monetary policy tends to inflate the economy 
up to six in this case, but with no real long-term impact on real output, still at 100 in this case here. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.